Please welcome incoming AJC President and Chair of AJC Board of Governors, Harriet Schleifer. Good afternoon. As AJC's incoming president and chair of the Board of Governors, it is my honor to present this year's Jan Karski Award. At the outbreak of World War II in September 1939, Jan Karski joined the Polish Army. After being captured and held prisoner by the Soviets, he escaped and joined the Polish underground movement. He then became a courier and conveyed secret information between the Polish resistance and the Polish government in exile. In late 1940, while on a mission, Karski was captured by the Gestapo and brutally tortured. Fearing that under duress he might reveal secrets, he slashed his wrists. But he was sent to a hospital from which the underground helped him escape. In late 1942, Karski was smuggled in and out of the Warsaw Ghetto and also a transit camp at Izbica, where he saw firsthand the horrors suffered by Jews under Nazi occupation, including mass starvation and the transport of Jews to death camps. Karski then traveled to London, where he delivered a report to the Polish government in exile and to senior British authorities describing what he had seen and warning of Nazi Germany's plans to annihilate European Jews. In July 1943, Karski journeyed to Washington and met with President Roosevelt to give the same warning and plead for action. Karski stayed in America and dedicated the rest of his life to teaching at Georgetown, to Polish-Jewish relations, to the anti-communist struggle in his native Poland, and to keeping the memory of the Holocaust alive. Karski's heroism cannot be under, overstated. Without his efforts, critical information may never have made it to the Allies, and countless more Jewish lives, including those of my family and others, would have been lost at the hands of the Nazis. AJC knew Jan Karski well until his death in 2000. We honored him memorably at an earlier global forum. And after his passing, we created this award to honor Jan Karski's memory. Today, we invoke his selfless spirit as we honor another individual who continues to demonstrate unimaginable courage in the face of darkness. This year, it is our privilege to present the Jan Karski Award to Mithal Al Alusi. Mr. Alusi, who traveled all the way from Baghdad, Iraq, to be with us today, has been a fearless proponent of the Arab world's acceptance of Israel and in the pursuit of Arab-Israeli peace, in a region where doing so means putting your life at risk. As you will learn from the video you're about to see, Mithal has paid dearly for this remarkable courage. Yet his resolve to bring about a more constructive, more cooperative Middle East has only strengthened. He has never compromised on his core values and vision. Please turn your attention to the screens. Why should I not talk to Israel? I look to the Israeli and American as supporter for the peace in the Middle East.
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mithal al Alusi. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It is really a great honor for me to be here. It is really a great honor for me to receive this award in a time where the Middle East is totally chaos and nobody knows what can be happening tomorrow. The fascists, they are taking over and controlling Middle East in general. Iraq through the Iranian militia and the Iranian Revolution Guard, and Lebanon through Hezbollah, and other Iranian Revolution Guard network everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, as I went first time to Israel in 2004, I thought it cannot be truth if somebody did kill Iraqi Muslim or Iranian or other Arabs, he's a terrorist. If the same guy he will kill Jewish or Israeli, he's a good man. It cannot be truth. <laughs> That's why I went to Israel in this counter-terrorist conference also to break the taboos, to have a new start for both nations, Israel state and Israeli nation, as well as Iraqi nation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with great pleasure and honor to thank you, AGC, to be and to support the anti, to fight against the anti semitic position in Orient and everywhere. But what does it mean for us? anti semitic does mean militias, does mean Hezbollah, does mean General Qasem Soleimani, does mean corruptions, does mean terrorists, does mean people they have no respect for, the, for a human being, does mean Islam is fascist, and they do not have any kind of values and standard and respect for human being, for peace, and for the new generation. They are playing with the human being. They do enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, ISIS is part of the history or part, part of the reality. Both, sorry to say it. I am a Muslim and I am proud to be Muslim and proud to be Iraqi. Both Sunni and Shi'i, they do agree to destroy Israel. This is the reality of those Islamic parties. They do agree to kill people. That's why we are not wondering to have seen Hamas, Hezbollah, Sunni and Shi'i, both totally extremists, working together with the Iranian regime, Iranian fascists, to reach their goals. We know what does mean their goals. We know it in Iraq. They did kill their own neighbors. They take over through the democratic tools, exactly as has been done one day in Europe. Through election, they are controlling a human being. There is no democratic process in Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, I went again in 2005 to Israel. This time, to be honest with you, they say, we will kill you if you do it. They did kill already my sons and my colleague. I went there to tell them, I will continue going there, I will continue working for peace and being together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I ran an election and I did witness it. 
Honestly, I don't believe that that much thousands of Iraqi, they did vote for Mithal because they did listen to my program. No, maybe two other position or reason. One, because I went to Israel. There is many, many Iraqi. They remember the Iraqi Jews as a friends, as a neighbors, as a good memory. But the, the ban Arab fascists and the ban Islam, Islamists, they don't allow them to be normal and to have such kind of connection to their old neighbors and old people. This is one of the reasons. The second reason, people, they vote to Mithar and my list because I am opposed to the Iranian, I am opposite to Islamist parties, fascists, militias, Hezbollah, and Hamas. And I just say it publicly many times, because I know why, and I know how dangerous they are. By the third time, 2008, I was already a member of the Iraqi parliament. I was also advisors for my government, and my prime minister, and etc. Always they told me, Mithal, please forget the issue of Israel. Don't talk about it. Don't go there. You are one from us. We will, you will be one from our main ministers. I was laughing about that. They want to tell me I have to sell myself. I have to accept this price. I have to be one of them. I came to Israel to make it clear, and I just say it there. We need, ladies and gentlemen, an ally. We need an ally existing from, that's what I just say that days. United Arab Emirates, Jordan, Iraq, Israel, Turkey, Great Britain, United States. We need that because we need to understand the fascists, they will be very, very dangerous in the next days. We need to have this alliance because the fascists they will create a new kind of terrorist. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe there is people they believe I am a dreamer. What good? I am dreaming from something normal, from something which we needed for our new generation, for something to have a stability and really to push for a human rights and a human being. Ladies and gentlemen, I did really enjoy it today to have seen the democratic position between parties, American parties. I do really enjoy it. I wish one day we will have it in Iraq. We will have such kind of discussion. But I do really hope and the dream from an American position, which there is no discussion when it's come on the fascists and the Iranian fascists and the Iranian dangers. Ladies and gentlemen, they, we have to take them very serious. They did kill hundreds of thousands of people. They did dis display millions of people. They did steal our dreams and the right to exist as a normal human being. Women, they have no right in the Iraqi society. They have no right in, in Hamas, in Gaza. They want to talk about right and value and values. We know them very well. They are our colleague, our colleague in the parliament, our colleague in the government. They are my colleague. They are playing on time. Tahran, Mr. Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian Revolution Guard, they are playing on time. Why do they need 150,000 missiles and rockets in Hezbollah? Why do they need that? Why do they need to threat us again and again? The Strait of Hormuz will be closed. The other areas under our control. Why do they need that? Ladies and gentlemen, the state of Israel is the fully right for the Jewish people, and they have to exist in peace. We need also to exist in peace. But no one from us can be, can be saved. If those people still controlling the budget, controlling the weapon, and they have the power of state, 
The Iranian people, they are looking for to be free. The Iranian looking, they are good people. The Iranian people, they have the right to exist as a normal human being. We don't need to have the representative of God sitting in the chair and advise us how we should do it, which one is good, which one is wrong. Iraqi Jewish Committee is a very proud committee. We like them, we know them. There is no normal Iraqi which he cannot tell you a good story about the Iraqi Jewish Committee. I am very, very thankful you gave me this honor and this award and this honor is not only for me, for all of the Iraqis, which they stand up against fascist and Iranian trade. Help us to be free. Thank you. Thank you.